All right, hello everyone. I'm Rex again. I only have 32 minutes before my next class, and so let's see if we can get this section four finished. All right, number one. According to the line graph above, between which two consecutive years was there the greatest change in the number 3D root, so steepest slope? D. Some values of the linear function f are shown in the table above, which are the following defined. F. Just look for change of x over change of y, a change of y over change of x, so eight over two, four C. This could be slow before. To make a bakery signature chocolate muffins, a baker needs 2.5 ounces of chocolate for each muffin. How many pounds of chocolate are needed to make 48 signature chocolate muffins? Oh my God. 22.5 ounces converted into pounds. Just make a conversion ratio. It's going to be 16 ounces per pound. We want the ounces to be on the bottom. So 2.5 times one pound over 16 ounces. I don't know what 2.5 divided by 16 is, but you do that times 48. Future me, use a calculator, go. Uh, four, three times C plus D is five. What's the value? It's just divided by three, five thirds. The weight of, thank you for the free point college board. The weight of an object on Venus is approximately nine tenths of its weight on Earth. The weight of an object on Jupiter is approximately 23rd tenths of its weight on Earth. The object weighs 100 pounds on Earth. You're asking how many more pounds does it weigh on Jupiter? So on Venus, it weighs 90, and on Jupiter, it weighs 230, 140. See, I hope an online bookstore sells novels and magazines. Each novel sells for $4. Each magazine sells for $1. Sadie purchased a total of 11 no novels and magazines that have a combined selling price of 20. How many novels did she purchase? Uh, I could make a system of equations, but I think I'm just going to like brute force this because that's easier, I think, but to do in my head. It's probably easier to write on paper as a system, but let's see. Uh, so if there's two novels, that'd be $8. That means nine magazines for $9. They add up to 17. doesn't add up to 20, so it's not A. B, if there's three novels, that's $12. Then there's eight magazines for $1, so eight, 12, oh, it's B, because they add up to 20. The Downtown Business Association, Dragon Ball A, in a certain city plans to increase its membership by a total of N businesses per year. There were B businesses in the DBA at the beginning of the year. Which of the functions best models the total number of businesses Why the DBA plans to have as members X years from now? Uh, so this is going to be a linear equation, right? Because it's not increasing fa rapid and faster and faster. So A or B. And then I know that if the number of years is zero, like if it's zero years from now, that means right now we should have B. If I plug in zero for answer choice B, it'll say like Y is equal to negative B. The story is saying that when zero years have passed, you should still have positive B. So A. Which defines an equivalent form of, uh, okay, 1.5 X squared. That's like... 15 squared is like 225, so that's like 2.25. 2.25 x squared, so minus 5.2, so it's gonna be like negative three-ish, so C or D. And then let's see what would happen to like the end. I know there's like a middle x coefficient, but I think we can just, it doesn't matter, like C and D is both say negative 7.2 x. So then 24 squared, 24, 25 squared is 625, so it'd be close to like six point something, plus six points so 12 C, I think. Nine, in the 1908 Olympic Games, the Olympic marathon was lengthened from 40 kilometers to approximately 42 kilometers. Of the following, which is the closest to the increase in distance of the Olympic marathon in miles? So two kilometers switched into miles when the conversion rate is one mile is 1.6. They just make a conversion ratio. Two kilometers, kilometers then times one mile over 1.6 kilometers. So two divided by 1.6. So one with a four, one and a quarter, B, I think. The density D of an object is found by dividing the mass of the object by its volume. D equals M over V. Great. Which of the following equations gives mass in terms of D and V? It's just, you just move the V, right? So it's like VD, A. In the XY plane, the graph of which of the following equations is perpendicular to the graph of the equation shown above? Perpendicular means opposite reciprocal slope. The ratio of X to Y in this one is negative two thirds. So the ratio of the perpendicular one should be three halves A. Easy peasy. 12, the system of equations above has solution x, y. What's the value of x? Then we just replace 1 half y with 4. So x minus 4 is 2. x is 6. D, which of the following ordered pairs x, y satisfies the system of inequalities? I'm just going to plug, plug in the answer choices, like those values that they give me in the answers for x and y, and see if they work. Negative 2, negative, negative 1. So negative 2 plus 1 is greater than 1. That's not true. I'm plugging into the second one because it looks easier. Uh, negative one minus three is greater than one. No, one minus five is greater than one. No, two plus one is greater. Yeah, that's D. 
In a survey, 607 general surgeons and orthopedic surgeons indicated their major professional activity. The results are summarized in the table above. If one of the surgeons is selected at random, which of the following is closest to the probability that the selected surgeon is an orthopedic surgeon who's indicated professional activities research? So the thing that they mentioned first is their denominator. They said if one of the surgeons is selected at random, so 607, that's all the surgeons uh, is their denominator, which of the following is the closest that the selected surgeon is an orthopedic surgeon who does research? So orthopedic research is their numerator. So 74 over 607. Whatever the heck that is, close to, I think it's going to be A because it seems like closer to 10% than to 20%, but we'll see. A polling agency recently surveyed 1,000 adults who were selected at random from a large city and asked each of, these all, of the adults, are you satisfied with the quality of the air in the city? Of those surveyed, 78% responded that they were satisfied with the quality of the air in the city. Based on the results of the survey, which of the following statements must be true? Survey question? Okay, don't assume stuff. Of all adults in the city, 78% are satisfied with... Okay, there's already, I think that that's kind of weird, because if they say 78%, then they mean 78%. And I don't think that if, I, if my sample group is at 78%, that it's the, the total group is going to be exactly 78%. It'll be close. But the way that one is phrased, it makes it sound like it's going to be the same, which I think is, like, not true. If another 1,000 adults selected at random from the city were surveyed, 78% of them would report that. Again, same problem, right? So it doesn't even say like roughly 78%. It says literally 78%, which means 78%. I'm not allowed to like assume that that means anything other than just what it means. So I think that, again, that's a little bit too uh, strong. 1,000 adults is selected at random from the city. 78% of them would report their... Set. Yeah, I, guess, I think it's none of them. It's a... One method of calculating the approximate age and years of a tree of a particular species is to multiply the diameter of the tree in inches by a constant called the growth factor of that species, for that species. So, okay, so diameter times growth factor is age. The table above gives the growth factor of eight species of trees. According to the information in the table, what's the approximate age of an American elm tree with a diameter 12? What's American elm tree's growth factor? 48D. I mean, it's four, so I did 12 times 4D. The scatter plot is a tree diameter plotted against 26 trees of a single species. The growth factor of this tree is closest to that, which is... Oh, I think we have to draw a line of best fit and estimate here. I think it's going to go roughly through, like, 1070 if I, if I drew, like, a line. So I think that the growth factor has to be around 7. Uh, maybe the shagbark one, D, I think. The, the other ones were, like, 3 or 4. If a white birch tree and a pin oak tree each have a diameter of... 12 inches, which of the following will be closest to the difference in inches of their diameters 10 years from now? So we have to use that formula somehow to get to this. 12 times, what do we know? We know the growth factor, so I guess the only thing that we can go figure out is the age, and then from there I guess we add 10 or something. So then diameter, so 12 times the growth factor of white birch and pin oak. White birch 5, pin oak 3. So 60 and 36 are the ages currently. Which of the following will be the closest to the difference in ages of the diameters 10 years from now? So then 10 years from now, now their ages are going to be 70 and 46. Their growth factors stay the same, right? So it'd be like the new diameter times 5 is equal to 70. And then the new diameter times 3 is equal to 46. 70 divided by 5 is like 14. 46 divided by 3 is like 15.3. So I think it's like 1.3 is the difference. C, I hope. 90. I'm sure future me will have a blast if I get all these wrong. 19. In triangle ABC above, what is the length of AD? 6. It's 30, 60, 90. Ready, B? Okay. Thank you for the free point, College Board, I guess. 20. The figure on the left above shows a wheel with a mark on its rim. The wheel is rolling on the ground at a constant rate along a level straight along a level straight path from a starting point to an ending point. The graph of y equals d of t on the right could represent which of the following as a function of time from when the wheel began to roll. The speed at which the wheel is rolling. Okay, it's a level straight path, so it's not like accelerating and decelerating. The distance, the wheel from the starting point. It's not going further and closer. Distance of the mark on the rim, for that wouldn't change because like it's round, so the distance would always be the same from the center. Distance of the mark on the rim from the ground. Yeah, it's that. Okay, so D. In the equation above, if A is negative and B is positive, which of the following must be true? Just plug in something, like A is 1 and B is negative 2. A is 1, B is negative 2, you'll get 1 minus negative 2, which is 3 over 1 is equal C. So C is like 3. That means B and C are wrong for, okay, it's A. It's the only one that where 3 is, the 3 is, belongs to. In state X, Mr. Cam's eighth grade class consisting of 20, oh, making good time, consisting of 26 students was surveyed at 34.6% of the students report, what? 
consisting of 26 students was surveyed and, I can read all the words, 34.6% of the students reported that they had at least two siblings. The average eighth grade class in the state is 26. If the students in Mr. Camp's class are representative of students in the state's eighth grade classes and there are 1,800 eighth grade classes in the state, which of the following best estimates the number of eighth grade students in the state who have fewer than two siblings? At least two siblings? Oh, okay, so the fewer than two siblings is gonna be like 65.4%, so like two thirds of them roughly. And then to find the two thirds of the total amount of kids. The total amount of kids is gonna be 1800 times 26. I don't know, 1800 times 20 at least is gonna be like 360,000, so maybe 400,000 rounded roughly. And then we have to do two thirds of that. I don't know, like 300K, 30K, I'm gonna say maybe 30, we'll see. Like maybe C, I mean. <clears throat> Uh, the Townsend Realty Group invested in five different properties listed in the table above. The table shows the amount in dollars the company paid for each property and the corresponding monthly rental price in dollars the company charges to the property each of the five locations. The relationship between the monthly rental price R in dollars and the property purchase price P in thousands of dollars can be represented by a linear function. Which of the following functions represents the relationship? Oh, just plug in points. So like if we take the first point, like P is 128 and then the monthly price is 950. If we plug that in, it should, it should give us a true statement. Uh, as much as I like making my life hard, I think I'm gonna pick an easier point there. Like let's do Edgemont Street, right? Where it's like 70. So, so the purchase price should be 70 and then five, it should be around 515. Cause I, I, don't, I don't think I can do like 128 times 2.5 and all that stuff. Okay, so the 70 times 2.5, I don't think I can, I don't know if I can do that either. 70, seven times two, 14, 18 I think, something like, okay, it's gonna be way too small. <laughs> Uh, it would be like 180, but they still be negative number. And then B, 70, 35, maybe? That does give me 515 on the dot. 70, 45, 42, and then 45, 40, it's too big. And then D, 7, oh my god, 7, 49, 35, 52, something. Oh, 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 it might be B or D. And then, okay, so it's B or D is A and C failed. And then I think it's like, we just plug in something else. Let's plug in, what's the next easiest one? I don't know, like, we do like four, 140 maybe. 140, repeat, 140, that'd be 700 plus that. It's a little short, 140, this. Okay, I think it's D, but future me, write the work down, check. Townsend Realty purchased the Glenview Street property and received a 40% discount on the original price along with additional 20% of discounted price for purchasing the property in cash. Which of the following best approximates the original price in dollars of the Glenview Street property? They bought it for 140K. So 140K is equal to the original with a 40% discount and a 20% discount. 40% discount is a 40% decrease. That means using the percent decrease formula, that would be represented as multiplying it by 0.6 because it's one minus 0.4. 20% decrease would be represented as 0.8 because it's one minus uh, 0.20. That means that we have to do 140 is equal to the original price times 0.6 times 0.8. That's 0.48. So it's like one, 140 divided, by, it's like close to double that. 300, I'm gonna say maybe B, but we'll see. A psychologist set up an experiment to study the tendency of a person to select the first item when presented with a series of items. In the experiment, 300 people were presented with a set of five pictures arranged in random order. Each person was asked to choose the most appealing picture. Of the first 150 participants, 36 chose the first picture in the set. Among the remaining 150 participants, P people chose the first picture. What? I just, I think I just, among the P people chose the first picture in the set. If more than 20% of all participants chose the first picture in the set, I don't know if I just read the same question, sentence twice, but if I did, Clearly losing my mind. Which of the following inequalities best describes the possible values of P? 150, remain, among the remaining 150P. So 36 plus P is like 20% of the stuff. D? That seems oddly easy for like a question 25. So 20% of 300 be represented as 0.2 times 300 because of means times. And then they said that it, like, it has to be at least 20%, so D, I think. Surface area of a cube is six times a over four squared, where a is a positive constant. Which of the following is the perimeter of one face of a cube? Surface area is six times the area of one face. If the area of one face is a over four squared, is it a cube? Yeah, so if it's a over four squared, a over four, a over four, that means each side is a over four. Perimeter of one face is gonna be a over four times four, so a, b. I'm sure that was not confusing at all. Yeah, the answer is a, b. 
I mean it's B, the answer choice that says small, lowercase a. 27, the mean score of eight players in a basketball game was 14.5 points. How much is that? 14, one, 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 two, I think, plus an extra four. One, one, six. Math is hard. I think it's one, one, six. If the highest individual score is removed, the meaning, the mean score of the remaining seven players becomes 12 points. What's the highest score? So if we get all of the score, oh, okay. So I think if we get one, one, six, and then subtract X, which is representing the highest score, and then divide that by seven now, because there's only seven scores, that should equal 12. One, one, six minus X divided by seven equals 12. So it equals 84. 116 80 minus 84 was that 116 32 c i hope <laughs> 28 the graph of the linear function f is shown in the xy plane above the slope of the graph of the linear function g is four times the slope of the graph of f so this thing's slope is one and a half right it rises one when it runs two mm, making good time rises one runs two so it's four times so then the slope of g is 2x the graph of g passes through the point that means it, the equation for g is 2x minus 4 because y intercept is negative 4 what's the value of g of 9 just plug in plug in 9 for x so 2x minus 4 so not 18 minus 4 14 c yeah the equation above defines a circle in the x y plane what are the coordinates of the center of the circle this is a completing the square we can just do the shortcut you take the x coefficient cut it in half you take the y coefficient cut it in half Put those in the parentheses with their respective letters. So it's going to become x plus 10 squared plus y plus 8 squared is equal to, and then square the things that you threw into the parentheses on the other side now. So minus 20 plus 100 plus 64. We don't need the radius here, though, but that's just like how you do it. Uh, if the formula says x plus 10 and the x, y plus 8, x plus 10 squared and y plus 8 squared, that means that the center is going to be the 10 and the 8 with flipped signs. So it's going to be negative 10, negative 8, b. In the equation above, a is a positive constant, and the graph of the equation in the xy plane is a parabola. Which of the following is an equivalent form of the expression? Isn't this difference of squares? It looks like difference of squares because they're trying to multiply a bunch of conjugates in the answer choice. It's definitely not d, right? So if like x squared, x squared minus a is equal to a squared minus b squared, that means that like the a squared corresponds with the x squared, and then the b squared corresponds with a. So x squared is like, yeah, I think it's going to start with an. Okay, they all start with x. Great. I think it's going to be b because that's the second term and then that thing squared would give you would give you a it would it would make it would match with the difference of squares formula yeah. horsepower and watts are units of measure of power they're directly proportional such that five horsepower is equal to 3730 watts how much power in watts is equal to two <laughs> five over 3730 equals two over x five over three is two over x oh my god seven four, six, zero, seven, divided by five, one, five, four, seven, one, four, seven, six. I don't know. Future me, do it. <laughs> Just punch it in the calculator. The painting, The Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh is rectangular in shape with a height of 29 inches and a width of 36.25. If a reproduction was made where each dimension is one third the corresponding original dimension, what is the height of the reproduction in inches? Okay, so 29 over three, weird. I guess it's not that weird. I mean, most people know this, but like the, once you start the gridding section on the SAT, the difficulty level will reset for both math sections. So like on section three, once you get to question 15, the last multiple choice one, that's when it's the hardest. And then question 16, the first gridding question is gonna be easy again. Same thing with section four, right? So if you go all the way up to question 30, the last multiple choice will be the hardest. And then for, it'll reset on 31, which is weird though, cause like 31 I thought was like harder to do, I guess than 30. Well, it's harder to do in your head than 32 is, but they're both not too bad, right? Like 31 is just simple proportion. 32 is just reading and then from here they'll slowly ramp up again uh, on ps of a pq equals rs so x minus 1 equals 3x minus 7 2x equals negative 6 no positive 6 2x equals 6 so x is 3 what's the length of ps so 3 minus 1 2 plus 3 plus 2 7 
And the xy plane point two five lies on the graph of the function f if f of x is k minus x squared, where k is a constant with the value of k. Just plug in. Oh, this is point plug in. It's classic, right? So if they give us a point and then they give us an equation, you put the, the point in the equation. So the point tells us x is 2, y is 5. We go put that in. The y is the f of x, so it'd be 5 is equal to k minus 2 squared, so k minus 4. Keep in mind, it's not like parentheses minus two squared, it's just minus two squared, which means you'd have to do two squared first. The minus doesn't change. Order of operations. So was it five equals k squared? Oh, five equals k <laughs> minus four, k is nine. It's all blending together. A landscaper is designing a rectangular garden. The length of the garden is to be five feet longer than the width. The area of the garden will be 104 square feet. It will be the length in feet of the garden. So the length is, would they say the length is longer than the width? Length is to be five feet long. So it's W for one side and W plus five for the other. W, so area is like base times height. So W times W plus five is equal to 104. That would give us W squared plus five W minus 104 is equal to zero. And the reason why I set it equal to zero is because it looks like it's a quadratic equation now. And in order to factor that, you have to set it equal to zero. So that's what we got. We have W five and one, negative 104. If we factor, I don't know, okay, so 52 and two, obviously don't, 52 and two don't work, 27 and four, 26 and four, 13, 13 and eight. I think it's 13 and eight. Yeah, x minus eight times x plus 13. This is plus five in the middle. So that means x is eight or negative 13. And since you can't have a negative 13 length side, x is, w is, uh, x the width is eight, right? The area, of the, and then what will be the length? 13, because it's 8 plus 5. I hope 36. Point P is the center of the circle in the figure above. What's the value of x? I think these are. Oh, these are two isosceles triangles, like touching, aren't they? Because AP would also be a radius. That means that AP and PB, AP, PC are all the same length. So if APB is a triangle and AP and PB are the same lengths isosceles, that means that like angle A consists of two 20 degree angles that are touching because so angle A is 40. You can use the inscribed angle theorem here, I think, to find that X is 80, which like that's the inscribed uh, angle situation where you have like, um, I don't really know how to do it. We have like a point on the edge of the circle, one point in the middle, and then they're, they're both attached to the same two points on the, uh, on the edge. But if you, if you didn't want to do that, then you could also solve for P. Because P would be two of the 140 degree angles touching, so it'd be 280. That means that P plus X would be 360 because they're like a total, they, they make a circle. So X is also 80 there. Nice. Great explanation, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Mrs. <laughs> Simon drives her car from her home to her workplace every workday morning. The table shows the distance in miles and her average driving speed in miles per hour when there's no traffic delay for each segment of her drive. Okay, so this looks like a distance equals rate times time thing. Given, considering it says distance, it says speed. It says average speed specifically, and a lot of times when they say average speed on the SAT, what they're referring to is the distance equals rate times time, the average speed being the rate. One morning, Miss Simon drove directly from her home to her workplace in 24 minutes. What was her average speed in miles per hour? Oh, God. She went, so what's the whole distance? So we need distance equals rate times time. They're asking us for average speed. They're asking us to solve for R, and so we have to go distance over time. Distance over time, so total distance is going to be 0.6, so 17.4 over 24 minutes. But we want to turn the 24 minutes into hours, so we're going to multiply it with a conversion ratio of one hour and 60 minutes. One hour to 60 minutes. Now, 24 minutes is on the bottom of my, it's on the denominator of my ratio starting out, because I have 17.4 over 24 minutes. That means that I need to multiply it with 60 minutes over one hour to have the minutes cancel out. So whatever 17.4 times 60 is, 17.4 times 60, and then divided by 24. I literally can't do that. Help, okay, 38. If Mrs. Simon starts her drive at 6.30 a.m., she can drive at her average driving speed with no traffic delay for each segment of the drive. If she starts her drive at 7 a.m., the travel time from the freeway entrance to the freeway exit increases by 33% due to the slower traffic. But the travel time for each of the other two segments every drive does not change. Based on the table, how many more minutes does Mrs. Simon take to arrive? Okay, okay. Wait, so let's figure out how much further it is, it increased by 33%. How much 
longer it takes, sorry, not further, so time increased by 33%. The current time of this highway, freeway portion would be distance equals rate times time. So it would be 15.4 divided by 50. It's three point something, three point, is it like 0.8? I'm not sure, three point something. And then you would multiply that by 1.33 to indicate a, an increase in of 33% according to the percent increase formula. Okay, and then once we get that, I think we subtract the two from one another. And then we would have to convert our answers into minutes, given that uh, the units that we were using originally was in miles per hour. So it's it, our original unit is in hours. I am not smart enough to do that in my head. And so future me will do it. Tell me when he's done. I hope he's done, because then we're done too. All right, so see you next time.